Uh, hello, everybody. Every year, many thousands of people die that don't need to because their doctor or perhaps no one knew the optimal way to treat them with drugs that are currently available. So uh, it's well understood that outcomes, treatments and outcomes vary widely across cancer centers and fall off sharply as you move from the elite centers out into uh, the community and the rural community and the third world community. And a lot of why lives could be saved if we only understood uh, you know, who knew what they were doing and we could get that information out and lift everyone up to the level of the best. But many more lives could be saved if we could lift the level of the best for everyone. And that's a challenge because there are now something close to a thousand drugs that are used in oncology, either off-label or combinations, and no one knows the optimal way to use these. In fact, no one even knows how to find that out because if you have a thousand drugs, maybe 20 of them are applicable to a given patient, and that patient might take half a dozen over the course of their cancer treatment. There's tens of thousands of ways of taking 20 things a half dozen at a time, and that doesn't say anything about what order uh, we're going to apply these drugs or what the timing is, right? Are they, you go on one drug till the patient recurs and then go on the next drug, or are they cocktails? Or what the dosing is, and all of this is personalized. So there's uh, exponentially more hypotheses that are rational to try than there are patients available to try them. And that's a fundamental challenge with clinical trials. An interesting perspective on this is that 25 years ago, perhaps, Cancer was a 10 by 10 disease. Namely, there were 10 types of cancer corresponding to major organs and uh, maybe 10 types of chemotherapies that would get uh, reused in different ways. So there's 100 boxes, a million patients a year. So 10,000 patients per box. You can run trials. Fast forward 25 years, and we now have, I don't know how many thousands of molecular subtypes and tens of thousands of plausible combinations of therapies to try. So there may be uh, 100 million to a billion boxes. Fortunately, still only a million patients. So epsilon patients, zero patients per box. You can't run trials. It just doesn't compute in cancer. We need to find a smarter way. So what do you do when you don't have enough patients? You have to use your AI not to analyze retrospectively the data that comes off of trials, but to figure out what you want to probe for next in order to be able to get the data that you need. And then you can use the AI to plan experiments that will try to get that, that data as efficiently as possible. And these experiments can be informed by all kinds of knowledge, from, from preclinical data to retrospective uh, clinical data to, most importantly, causal models, most importantly, uh, the expert opinions of the best doctors. Because in the absence of data, that's what you can fall back on. And here's a quote from my board member who's sitting up here in the front that says, uh, in the absence of definitive clinical studies, the best you can do is go to the top experts. Every day, thousands of experiments get done in oncology offices as desperate patients and their physicians are trying to figure out what to do after a patient's exhausted standard of care. But these experiments are not planned. Uh, there's very sporadic observation in terms of reporting it out to anyone else. And there's no learning, no coordination, no learning that goes on in this space. A particularly valuable place where we can look for information is molecular tumor boards. And this was talked about in the session right before this talk. And this is where the, uh, the uh, top doctors at the elite centers are working on the most challenging cases. A lot can be learned here. Uh, a lot can be learned not just about their decisions, but their reasons for making that decision, and almost nothing is captured today. So to do something about that, Cancer Commons is building a network that's anchored in these tumor boards, but ultimately extends to all of oncology, with the goal of trying to transform the clinical practice of oncology into an opportunity to continuously learn from all patients on all treatments all the time. And we call that virtual trials. So within this space, the idea is to try to optimize two things simultaneously. One is the individual outcomes for each patient, and secondarily, the collective learning of this system over all patients in the system, to be able to coordinate those things 
For example, by being able to rapidly replicate successes and quash the failures. So within the context of molecular tumor board network, you want to be able to provide the ability for anyone in this network to be able to say, how are my peers treating patients similar to this one? Based on all the experience that they've integrated. So uh, the individual tumor boards could have all kinds of decision making. But I want to know how my peers are treating this patient. And I would like to know what the top choices are, A, B, and C, and the reasons for those choices. And then I ask the people on the, who are making a decision for each patient, choose one and tell us why you chose that one, because that's how we learned. And if you like something better, choose that one. Uh, tell us something we don't know, and tell us why, because we certainly learned that way. And in either case, tell us what you did and how it worked, because that's how everybody learns. And then once we have that, we can run this kind of collective experiment over the whole system, trying to optimize things. So when these votes come in, if there's a clear consensus, well, that's maybe what you should try next. But if there's a split decision where the community doesn't agree, then you know what experiment to run. And what we can do is to try to coordinate those experiments system-wide in order to maximize information gain. And that's the piece that no one is thinking about today. This is using AI not for retrospectively analyzing data, but for figuring out what data you want to get next and to be able to optimize a sequential series of experiments that can learn a lot faster than a particular set of trials which run, you know, take a long time to be able to run each time. So my colleague Jeff Schrager equates this to running an air traffic control system over biomedicine, and I'd like to show a short film on how this might work. Please. Modern medicine has transformed our lives, in many cases completely curing diseases that used to be death sentences. But for cancer and for some rare diseases, there are a huge number of possible treatment combinations and a similarly huge number of different subtypes of the disease. As a result, there aren't enough patients to try every possible treatment in every subtype. Big data approaches also don't work well in these sorts of diseases. Getting huge piles of data on a limited number of patients actually makes matters worse, leaving us with too few independent observations to differentiate signal from noise. Computer scientists call this the curse of dimensionality. Efficiently testing new treatments requires carefully coordinating every treatment experience so that successes are rapidly validated and failures are rapidly discarded. Prospective clinical trials are the best way we know for doing this, but there are too many plausible treatment combinations and too many disease subtypes to run prospective trials on all of them, nor even on very many of them. Moreover, only a small percent of patients participate in trials, mm -hmm. as few as 3% according to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Of course, the other 97% of patients are also treated, but these off-trial treatment experiences are not properly coordinated to efficiently answer the causal question of which treatments work on which subtypes. A new method called Global Cumulative Treatment Analysis, or GCTA, is designed to solve this wicked problem. GCTA works like an air traffic control system for medicine. Coordinated teams of experts and algorithms enable the air traffic control system to efficiently and safely fly thousands of airplanes all over the world at the same time. Similarly, coordinated teams of experts and algorithms enable GCTA to efficiently and safely coordinate the thousands of treatment decisions made every day across the whole medical system. GCTA delivers the best possible treatment to every patient, while at the same time efficiently testing the whole space of possible treatments. Global cumulative treatment analysis can carry out treatment validation for cancer and rare diseases safely and efficiently, once more enabling medicine to transform our lives. Okay, we can uh, move on. Uh, for anyone who wants to see this, it's uh, on YouTube, uh, Jeff Schrager, G GCTA, uh, and get the movie. Uh, there's a very nice algorithm, and I don't want to take the time to go uh, through it in detail, other than uh, to say that you know, a patient comes in to uh, the top molecular tumor board, uh, decisions, the three decisions, they get to choose, and we try to capture both the reasoning for the decision and the data that comes out of it, and then the Bayesian loop closes. 
What I do want to say is why this is fundamentally a very hard AI problem compared to most of what uh, you've heard about today or even are familiar with when you think about uh, the standard uh, game playing or self-driving cars. In all of these domains, you have lots of data. And the data is clean data. Uh, the, you have good simulations. You can run uh, you know, driving against uh, driving simulators or uh, go against, you can play go against yourself all night long. Uh, but not in this domain, because in, in cancer, uh, we don't have uh, a lot of good data, at least not accessible to most people. And the uh, experiments uh, and, the, and the simulation is, uh, you know, we don't have good cancer simulators. So, you know, think about mice, for example, uh, which give you an answer within months. And the experiments, to run an experiment in these other domains are basically free. But in cancer world, to run an experiment on a patient is a thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, and there's a human life on the line. So what do you do in situations like that? You have to spend a lot of time planning to make sure you're going to do the right thing. Uh, the analogy is like when you have a, a rover on the Mars, right? And you don't want to run over into a, into a rut, so you spend a lot of time thinking before you make the move. And that's what's necessary here. And in order to do that, we need to make use of all of the resources that are represented at this conference. There are hundreds of companies that are selling uh, or providing some kind of assay or test or high throughput screen or test to be able to monitor response or what have you. And I can go around this circle, and if I had the time, I could put up all, you know, a sampling of all of the different things. And I can tell you that there is no one on the planet who knows how to integrate or coordinate all of these services and tests and models and decision-making tools for the benefit of patients. This is why cancer needs, why my, my colleague Jeff Schrager says cancer does not need a moonshot. What it needs is an air traffic control system. And so Cancer Commons, true to our name, is convening a consortium in order to build that air tra traffic control system. But this is not something that I choose to own or that any one organization can build. I need your help. I need all of you who have something that can benefit patients to send me a short email uh, with your uh, name and your interest, personal interest or corporate interest, and what it is that you bring to the table that can help patients, and what is it that you would like to get from a consortium that aims to be able to integrate all these things into the perspective decision making that I've been talking about so that we can go save some of those hundreds of thousands of people who die every year that don't need to. I have some people in the room, uh, Cancer Commons people, please raise your hands. And so after the session's over, after the next speaker, find someone, myself or any of the people who are raising their hands, and come see us or send me an email, please. Thank you very much.